Hi, this is a video about installing all metal hotends on a FlashForge Dreamer. And at the end of the video, I'll show you a test print with polycarbonate filament. Let's go. The FlashForge Dreamer comes fitted with two brass nozzles, fitted with a PTV tube acting as a heat break. Now, these nozzles are fine for printing with plastics that do not require a uh, very high extrusion temperature like PLA or ABS but are not suitable for printing de more demanding plastics like nylon or polycarbonate. Now I decided to upgrade my printer with all metal hot ends. In my case I bought hot ends from the company Micro Swiss. This company seems to be specialized in high precision lathe cutting and milling. But they also have a web shop with all metal hot ends and uh, nozzles of varying sizes. Here you see one of the all metal hot ends that I purchased. It has an aluminum alloy thermal tube and a stainless steel heat break. On the left you see a stainless steel nozzle with a 0.4 mm diameter. This is a nozzle with a 0.6 mm diameter. And I also got a smaller nozzle with a 0.3 mm diameter. The company also has a 0.2 mm diameter in their program, but I didn't purchase it since I didn't think I would need it, but maybe I'll purchase that later. I'm not sure if it shows in the video, but these are actually really nicely machined parts. Now I did not measure them for dimensional accuracy, but I had no problems whatsoever mounting them in the existing heating block. So that seems to be fine. The nozzles are coated with what the supplier calls a twin clad XT coating, which is supposed to provide low friction and uh, higher wear resistance. Since I don't have a lot of printing experience with these nozzles, we'll just have to take their word for it. In this picture, you see an exploded view of both the standard hot ends as well as the Micro Swiss all metal hot end. At the top, you see the standard hot end with from left to right the thermal tube, the PTEV tube the heating block and the brass nozzle. And at the bottom you see the Micro Swiss hot end with the all metal uh, thermal tube, the same heating block and the new stainless steel nozzle. The old nozzles can be removed by holding the heating block with a, an adjustable wrench while loosening the brass nozzles with a 9mm spanner. When the nozzle is completely loosened it might still be a little bit stuck on the teflon tube so it might be easy to remove using a pair of pliers. And the same goes for the other nozzle. The Teflon tubes themselves might also be a bit stuck, so you can use the same pair of pliers uh, to pull them out. So here we are at the top of the printer. Now in order to install the new metal hot ends, you have to completely disassemble the extruder assembly. You start by taking off the top cover of the electronics box. Okay, I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it's quite tedious uh, work. So you remo remove all of the cables. Make sure you mark all the cables before you pull them out of the terminal just to make sure that you can easily put them back in the correct terminal when you reassemble the unit later. Uh, now the ink doesn't stick very well to some of the cables so it might be better to use uh, a piece of tape and, and you know write your markings on that. So after removing uh, the electronics box you can remove the stepper motors and the extruder fans. This is done by loosening just two bolts at the front.
the stepper motor is now completely loose. So if you still have some filament in there, you can just uh, pull out the stepper motor and remove the filament. And the last part removes the PLA fan, which is held in place by just a couple of screws on the side. So now we can remove the cooling bar, which contains the actual nozzle assemblies. This is done by removing two screws uh, at, located at the bottom of the X carriage. There we go. For the user guide, I actually labeled the extruder bar with left and right labels, uh, including the nozzle assemblies. This is not strictly necessary, but it makes reassembly just a little bit easier. You can remove the nozzle assemblies by loosening a, a set screw using an Allen key. And depending on how hard they tighten this at the factory, it might be easy to remove or very hard. In my case, the, one of the extruders came out pretty easily, but the other one was really stuck. Now, in order to remove the nozzle assembly, I just put the cooling bar on the vise and gently tapped the nozzle assembly out using a hammer and punch. With the nozzle assembly removed from the cooling bar, it's now possible to remove the thermal tube from the heating block. This can be done using, again, a 9mm spanner and an adjustable wrench. Here we have the cooling bar again. Um, as mentioned earlier, it was quite hard to remove one of the nozzles. And that was because of uh, damage done by the set screw on the thermal tube, which in turn got stuck into the cooling block. So it might be a good idea to remove some of the material around the area where the set screw damaged the thermal tube. Here's the new steel hot end. Now there's a special way of mounting this. You're actually not supposed to tighten it using a wrench at this point. You just manually uh, turn it until it bottoms out and then turn it back roughly half a turn. You're only supposed to fully tighten it using a wrench at the very end of the process after uh, leveling the nozzles. And the same goes for the thermal tubes. You just turn it and uh, tighten it by finger pressure. And same goes for the other nozzle. Before mounting the nozzles with thermal compounds, it's actually a good idea to uh, test fit them to make sure they slide in easily. Some thermal compound is supplied with each kit. This is used to increase the efficiency of the heat transfer from the thermal tube to the cooling bar. After sliding in the, the thermal tubes, make sure that they are roughly at the same height. Uh, the manual indicates that you should set them to roughly one millimeter from the surface, and I use the calipers for this. When this is done, you can remount the extruder bar on the X carriage. 
The next step is aligning both nozzles with each other and the print pad. And this is very critical, so make sure you take your time to do this right. You can raise the print pad by hand by just pushing it up or by rotating the z-axis lead screw. So bring the bed up until it touches the lower nozzle. At this point you can tighten the lower nozzle and untighten the nozzle that was a bit higher and press it down until it also touches the print bed and retighten it. Now we can reassemble the entire extruder assembly in reverse order. And the last thing to do is to tighten the nozzles with a 9mm wrench. And we're done. So as first test I loaded the left extruder with PLA and printed out a test part. And I, I had no issues at all, really. To really test out the extruder, I decided to give it a try with uh, PC Plus by Polymaker. This is a, a polycarbonate filament released somewhere last year. So it comes nicely packaged in a box with a manual with printing instructions. It comes supplied with uh, a build tech sheet, since apparently that's the only thing that uh, this filament sticks to. And of course the filament itself with some desiccant. In order to clean out the extruder from any remaining PLA, I um, fed it through the extruder, uh, followed by some PETG material. After this I raised the temperature up to 250 degrees C. Finally, I raised the temperature to 260 degrees C uh, to be able to feed through the polycarbonate filament. And there we go, the Flashforge Dreamer printing out uh, a Benchy test piece in polycarbonate. So after the build platform had cooled down, I tried to remove the print, and um, as you can see, it sticks pretty well. I had my nozzle height set to 0.2 millimeters uh, from the platform, but if you want to be able to remove your prints a little bit more easily, um, you can set it to 0.3, according to the manual. So I'll try that next time. And also if you want to be able to remove the rafts uh, uh, more easily from your model, um, it's also a good idea to have at least 0.3 millimeters between the raft and your model, um, which I did not have, so it was quite a challenge to get the raft off.
After removing the largest portions of the rafts by hand, I used some coarse sandpaper, um, starting with 60 grit and then moving on to finer sandpaper to remove all of the rafts. And actually left a quite a decent finish. And here we have the polycarbonate model, the black one on the right, side by side with uh, the red PLA model. As you can see, the surface finish on the PLA model is actually very good. But for a first try, I think the polycarbonate model actually looks pretty decent. There is some stringiness here and there, and uh, the bridging isn't uh, as good as with the PLA model, but Overall, I'm quite happy with the results. If you need more information on this subject, uh, click on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.